Hello, hello, once again. So, in this video, I'm going to kind of do auto hotkeys mixed in with how to do a few things with Excel. Um, Excel's used all around the place, you know, especially at jobs and stuff. This could be a cool way to basically get data. There's also ways to input data, but I'm going to separate that into a second video. Just so this video is going to be, you know, how to get data from an Excel. And then my next one will be how to input data into Excel. Let's go ahead and jump into that code. So the first thing we got here, I'm just going to trigger with F9 hotkey this time. Uh, the first thing I got, I just got my file path to where my Excel document is saved. Uh, if you don't want to hard code this, you can always make this a variable and just put an inbox input box up here or something with like a GUI. That's perfectly fine too. I've done some videos with GUIs and kind of how to do something like that. So you can check those out. The first thing we want to do is we want to connect to the Excel uh, program and file. So we're going to use these to uh, grab the expressions from them. And what that's going to do is basically one of these. Uh, I don't think I've really explained these, but you can take a variable, have an expression, and it stores the uh, output as a variable. So this is something that's kind of cool to look into. This will definitely be added to one of my new intro videos that I'm going to do soon, just to kind of better explain that. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to connect through a com to the Excel application here. Next, we're going to go ahead, we want to go ahead and find that specific file that we have. So there's that file path that's up here again. Um, then we're going to do read only. I'm just kind of grabbing data. I don't need to input data or anything. That would change if you did, which like I said, I'll explain in another video. So that's just going to equal true. Now this is a really cool line right here. The uh, visible equals zero. That's basically saying that you don't actually have to open the Excel file to grab this data. It kind of runs in the background. Uh, you can change that if you do want it to open and then maybe just have it closed. But I just want to pull the information without Excel ever even opening and me seeing it. I don't want that, so I'm just going to put it at zero. It's just a really cool line that makes it very seamless. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and grab all the info I want. So I set up a little chart here. Let me go ahead and pull that up. Here's my Excel document. So I'm just doing client code and name. So the client has a code plus their name, their phone number, what state they're in, and their fax number. So that's going to go ahead, grab the column. Um, I'm looking specifically for A3. Uh, I don't want the client's number, I just want their name, so I'm just going to string write 5 because the code always has 5 digits, let's say. I'm going to grab the client's phone number and B3, client's state and C3, and the client's fax number and D3. The one thing you will need to change in all this is make sure you just have that name changed to whatever the document is called, like right here. So that tab is called test doc. And that's what I got there is test doc. You can make these variables if you want, but I'm going to get a little bit more into that in the next video. This is just kind of more of an intro. Uh, the next thing you want to do is uh, just have a quit, ul.quit with um, the parentheses here. That's going to disconnect the comms basically from Excel. If you were to forget this line and try to open Excel, maybe for like your next project or something, you might get like a weird error. In which case, all you got to do is really just say OK. The problem really comes is if it's a shared Excel file, if you don't put this quit, run this program, and somebody else tries to access the Excel file, they'll actually get a warning saying that, hey, this user is currently making changes to this document. You cannot access it. So if, especially if you're doing like a shared Excel file, do not forget this because it can cause problems for all the other people who need to gain access to that at some point. So the final thing, pretty simple. I just want to go ahead and display the uh, info that I collected in that field right here. Um, just formats it and then message box there. 
let's go ahead and take a look at that one being used and we'll just go function by function so here's the document i don't have to have it open like i said before but i'm going to leave it open for visual and uh, i'm going to go ahead and push f9 and then it's just going to run through the script and there we go so i got the information tom his phone number he's in delaware and there's his fax number there we go Let's take a look at the next one. So here, I'm just going to use F10. I'm going to start with a variable equal to zero. What this is really kind of doing is it's reading line by line instead. Where up here, I had a specific spot that I wanted to pull from. But here, I'm just going to say, just read through and um, like line by one. One by one, sorry. <laughs> Um, so here we go, we you know, same as up there, we're connecting to the set Excel application, kind of clearing out this variable, and then I'm going to create a loop. So body text, that's basically saying look at that range in column A, you can change this to whatever column you want to look at, and then it's going to start at A index plus 1, plus 2, plus 3, plus 4 as it loops through, just grabbing that value there. Then I have that variable count up here that starts with zero, just counting up. That way right here, I can take whatever that body text was and store it. So variable, uh, variable save name one, variable save name two. Uh, if body text equals blank, basically meaning we, we uh, reached a blank spot here, it's the end of the list. Go ahead and break the loop, we're done. There's no point in reading thousands of lines when there's nothing there. And then I'm going to just say message box load complete. Row 4 info is, and I just put this variable in. Final row is, and that will show me how many rows there are total. This is kind of used for pulling all the data. So, you know, column A, let's say I need to pull a list of all the client's names. I could have it go through. It's basically going, you know, 1, 2, 3 grabbing that info, that info, that info, and storing each one as its own unique variable. So then I could just at you know, some point, you know, have like a message box that has like, you know, all the variables in it, or create a list using a array or a loop to, you know, do whatever I want. That's really up to you. I'm just going to use a message box here. Once again, next video, I'll go in a little more depth on you know, good ways to kind of display this information. This is good enough for now. Let's go ahead and see that one in action. F10. So I'm going to go ahead and push F10. And I got that. Load complete. Row 4 info is 2222 Sam, which is correct. Final row is 4. So it realized that line 5, it was blank. Go ahead and stop. Put that message box up there. And then here's our third and final one. Um, this one I'm just going to do F11. So this one's kind of joining the two things I showed up there. A little bit of some code from one, a little bit from another. Just uh, be like a third kind of variation of what you can do. So once again, Excel application, connect with the com, clear out that variable, and then I'm going to loop it. So it's so basically doing the same thing, body text. It's looping through uh, column A there. You know, one, two, three, get the value, add a variable uh, to store it. This time, instead of looking for a blank one, I'm looking specifically for this uh, client. Once again, this is hard coded in. You could use, put a variable here, uh, maybe put an inbox up here, or an input box, or a GUI. You could type in, like, hey, I'm looking for, you know, one, two, three, four, five, Tom. When you find that, go ahead and then break. But I'm just going to hard code it in there so you can visually see that a little bit better. Then once again, like we have up in the uh, first one, go ahead and connect to that Excel file. Uh, read only true file path, which you know I could put down here, but I did have it. If I can scroll up, ah, there we go. I already had it up here. So I don't need to put it in the script twice. Visible zero meaning I don't need it to be open. Once again, make sure you put that quit. Always very important. 
And then I'm going to do variable plus plus just because that ended there. But um, the reason I'm doing that and I'm making it one more is because I don't want this to be counted as a line. Uh, just because that's kind of like the title for it. So I don't want to count that. So I'm just adding that extra. You might not need this if you are actually reading from the first line. I'm starting to read from the second line is where I really care what information it gets. So then it's going to tell me Tom was found at line and then whatever line that was at. Go ahead and do that one. What was that? F11. Once again, I don't have to have Excel open. I'm just leaving it open so you can see it in action. So F11. Going to run through there. And Tom was filed at line 6. That's not right. What did we do wrong here? Let's take a look. Ah, you know what it is? I need to put this to start at zero. There's our problem. All right, let's run that again. All right, there we go. Let's run that again. So F11. That's going to read through, looking for Tom. Here we go. Tom was found at line three. That is correct. So with that, I just um, simply just forgot to put that variable to reset to zero. When I was testing, I had ran it once, so it did equal three, but because I forgot that variable, it ended up doubling down to six. So yeah, don't forget that variable. Pretty much whenever I make a mistake, it's always for some reason something with a variable. Yeah, if you guys have any questions about what I gotten through here, you know, I kind of went more with the approach of the stuff you guys need to worry about and what you need to change. You know, I know I didn't really get into details on this stuff. This is stuff you're never really going to change. It, you know, you can just copy it from the code that I'm going to paste in the description below, like always. But yeah, ask specific questions on this. Like I said, in the next uh, Excel video I do, I'm going to go a little bit more in depth uh, with what you can do with this stuff and more about how to actually like make changes in the file versus just gathering data from the file. Yeah, please subscribe. Let me get one of those likes, please. It definitely helps me out. I'll see you guys on the next one. Enjoy.